Hey, what up guys and welcome back to another episode of our Marvel Legends review series. Today we're taking a look at Hobgoblin. So with old Hobby Gobby here, I just want to point out that his color scheme is sick. This shade of blue and orange just blends and meshes perfectly together. I think maybe they were getting a little throwback to Goku there, but it works for this guy as well. So before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of this guy, let's get one thing straight. Harry Osborn was and never is supposed to become the Hobgoblin. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Spider-Man comics lore, he is a successor to Norman Osborn as the Green Gob, not this guy. Alright, so let's kick things off with this guy's looks. Now he does come with a glider, which I love how they actually paid attention to detail here. And it's way different looking than the Green Goblin's, gl bleh, Green Goblin's glider, that's a tongue twister there. And I love it, I mean like, you even got like dark, not black, but like charcoal gray smoke coming out the back, that's pretty sick. And they've included the wheels on the bottom, which kind of reminds me of a McDonald's toy. So this is a Spider-Man classic, not a Marvel Legend, unlike the Green Goblin I just reviewed. But can you really tell? I mean, it's so dang cool. And, whoop, well, there he goes. I love the way that they made the toes. It's actually like, they, they, they were actually like, hmm. You know, if I, was, I was, if I was posing this thing, I don't want this guy like falling off the glider or anything. So that's wicked cool how they twisted his feet like that. I'm not sure where his toes actually stop or what, but that may be painful if they go all the way through that. Anyways, I think this is really cool what they did because it's almost like they thought of everything. And the reason I say that is watch. This base, you're actually able to unclip the actual glider from the McDonald's gimmicky smoke part, which is a rubbery kind of solid plastic, and have this guy on the glider by itself. That is sick, people. How cool is that? Look at that. What? 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 Alright, so everything else aside, let's take a look at this guy's face first. Let's unhook him from the glider here. You guys get to watch me struggle through this. It's like, it's like, wow, okay, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. But anyways, let's take a look at his face. This is a truly, truly menacing hobgoblin face. I really like what they did, especially if you guys have ever seen the Goosebumps show or read the Goosebumps books way back in the 90s, early 2000s. This looks a lot like the Haunted Mask. But anyways, I love the way that they had the, these ridges going here on the eyebrows. You can flap that up. Kind of looks like an evil version of the Fantastic Force thing. I love the way that the eyes are a solid red. Like, he actually looks like a demonic version of the Green Goblin. Now, he's not Demogoblin, or I guess uh, you could say, you could call Demogoblin McFarlane's version of Hobgoblin even so. But yeah, the, the mask is truly menacing. And the paint is pretty clear. Like, you don't see any bleeding or any runny edges anywhere. It's fantastic. Looking at the rest of his body, I love the way they kept the, or I guess this predates the Green Goblin figure. So I love the way they started with the fish scaling texture here on the armor. That is mega cool. I love the way that they included wrinkles here on the gloves and everything. It really gives, it really gives the figure a pop, you know what I mean? It's not a, just a drab blue and orange McDonald's looking thing on like the base over there. But it, it just, this figure has so much character to it. Especially, especially, especially the legs. This guy kind of looks like he got messed up real bad by the Yakuza. But, uh, yeah, like, look at that. That is so cool. He even has the pumpkin bomb, which, just like the Marvel Legends uh, Green Goblin, you can't remove that. If you can see, there's a little notch of plastic conjoining the two, but that's fine, that's fine. He's usually throwing these things anyways. And just like the other Green Goblin, he does come with a satchel, and I love this satchel. The reason being is you get that bright ass green logo right there that's so cool and this has a more of a you know demonic arc what's that word archaic not archaic the more demonic kind of uh, old world feel to it like a, a witch or something like this is something that you're not supposed to be messing with but this guy did it and he just got messed up and that's why he looks like that so don't do it don't try any black magic at home kids do not do it put the book down and finally we come to his cape which you know sets him apart further from the Green Goblin and the little beanie here, here. It's more of a Halloween-y 
hood, but I love the way this is flexible. You can throw it around and everything. You can see the back here. Don't really think it's removable, but why would you want to remove it anyways? Because, you know, this is part of who he is, man. You can't strip this man of his identity. Yo, what up, girl? So you're getting into his articulation. Does anybody else get the feeling like this guy just wants to bust out into some show tunes or something? I don't know if it's just that that's just me, but whatever. So his head does probably have the capability of going 360. However, the two different parts of the hood here, the cloth, make that difficult. So I wouldn't mess with that too much. You can already hear the noises there. So don't do that too much. He can look up a little bit. He does have a neck joint right in there. Focus it on that, which means he can also look down, which is even better because you have a goblin on a glider, chances are you're going to want him to be looking down instead of looking up because that's just how the cookie crumbles, my friends. Anyways, looking at the arms, you've got typical, you know, this is just too fun here. I'm just hoping it doesn't fall off as I do this. It's fun. <laughs> you've got the typical range of motion for the arms. You know, you've got, you've got double jointed, a double jointed elbow right there, so that's cool. His hand has that swivel here. You've got wrist articulation and a little bit of finger articulation here. Now, this is kind of unique, I guess, because it's almost like you can have him kind of like clutching the bomb, getting ready to throw it, and then if you're doing some stop motion, it's just like, yep, I just released that thing. You guys get out of the way, go tell your mom, duck under the table, everything. This pose I have him in right here is just sick. He just looks like he doesn't give a crap. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to blow things up now. All right. Anyways, uh, he's got an ab crunch joint, if you've just seen that activate just now. Pretty nice. A little bit of extension there. Look, makes him even... He looks like he's just like crazy, man. I love this figure for that. He just looks insane. Kind of like Doctor Doom, but with more personality instead of... You know what I mean? And then for the legs, he's got great articulation here. You can move up. He's got donkey kick action, and it might get stuck in the donkey if he tries to kick it. But anyways, he's got double jointed knees here. He's got, he's got the gear rotation, guys. That's cool. And just like Green Gobby himself, he's got the same articulation here with ankle pivot as well. However, that is limited to some degree on the medial side going towards his body. Some terminology for you there. All right, so here are the two goblins side by side, and they just look so sick, man. Like, I can't even tell you. And, like, I mean, another thing with this one here is... I love this posability on this one here because look at that, you can just get some wild poses and he can still stay on the glider. This one you probably could do that too, it's just the fact that this guy has a little bit more demented feet, so he's able to stay actually hooked onto his glider when you pose him like that. But aside from that, like, they are what they are, they represent both of their characters pretty damn well. I mean, this is a more classic Green Goblin everyday look, and this is your Halloween costume busting out going crazy look right here. So, I mean, yeah, they're both pretty fantastic. And, I mean, you can have them side by side fighting each other. In my display, I have them on either side of Spider-Man, actually. So, it's pretty cool like that. But, yeah, guys, like, wow, I'm blown away by both these figures. So, would I recommend picking Hobgoblin up? absolutely. freaking -lutely. I mean, he's going to be one of the harder figures to find. I picked mine up loose off eBay. And, you know, you shouldn't run your, your budget up too much. He's not... A highly demanded character however you might be after this review you never know it's okay to dream big but uh, I would say definitely pick him up guys because he, he does add some flavor to your display for sure I mean what other Marvel characters have this coloration I mean maybe some of the X-Men might come close but uh, this guy's just pretty cool so definitely 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 do recommend picking him up but yeah guys that's been my review on the Spider-Man Classics Hobgoblin Hope you like what you saw here, and if you want to see more of what you did see here, don't be afraid to smash that like button for me. And as always, until next time, peace.